friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. This is Spencer Colgan and welcome back to my wallpaper and painting show on YouTube. Today we're painting two doors and a lot of prep work is involved. It's a tedious job. I think most people can paint if they followed some basic instructions, but what makes painting impossible for most people is the prep work involved and the tediousness of it. People just don't wanna be involved with it. And most people who can paint but won't paint say, I, I hate the mess. So I get it, and I'm just gonna show you uh, part of the prep work that goes involved, or all of the prep work that gets involved with painting a door. And if you don't do it, you, your work won't look its best. Let me show you what I mean. How do you like that bird? Isn't that awesome? This is a newly installed door, right? Look closely here. You don't want to paint over that. This, these are the burrs on the wood when it comes to your home. And this needs to be smoothed down. So, and I just mean a light sanding when I say smooth down. Got to get into these grooves with a sponge sander and this knocks most people out right now putting this tape on protecting the glass and doing this will knock most people out of the game already but if you don't do it imagine seeing that after it's painted it's it's really an ugly sight so a few minutes of sanding, a little sweat, and you can do it. See how that sponge gets right in that corner there? Now, I follow painting and decorating from the UK, and I saw One of those two guys, the guy who does most of the videos. He painted one of these doors with a brush. He didn't use any tape. I tell you, the guy is good. Um, he's very good. And I honestly think that people like that who don't use tape are just so used to doing it like that that they could never even consider doing it any other way. You know, for me, that would take a lot of time to keep that brush off of that glass. And I asked him, and he politely told me, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, he didn't say that, but he said, that would take a lot of time. And so I feel the same way. That would take a lot of time not to use the tape but you know i respect the man's trade and and what he does and what he's used to doing right. so that's how i do it and i get at the top you always want to paint this part of the door because moisture gets in swelling gets in for here and the bottom as well. So now that we've smoothed out the area, we have to clean up the, uh, the dust that we made because that'll be back in your paint, okay? Now that's smooth. If you're dealing with floors that are dark, especially, and you proceed without covering the floors, 
you will have a liability issue. Now, if you are a painter, here's what I do. Take a video before you begin your work and just keep it to yourself. Take a video and get close because you want to see if the customer has ever had somebody painting in the house prior to you. And good people, really good customers, they'll say, hey, you got paint on the floor. Now this has happened to me two times. Hey, you got paint on the floor. And um, I cannot tell you how that sours a relationship quickly. Okay? This is all old stuff. So what I do now is take pictures and video, and I just keep it to myself. And you have to make sure that you get their environment so that they know it's their home. And you just, oh, no, 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 that was there, you know? You don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or egos. You just keep, oh, so, oh no, I took a video of that, you know, that was, that was already there. So this, because here's what happens. Good people will only, well, good people will notice things after you're done and they'll say, oh, did you see this? It happened to me. Two good people I worked for last year, they had a chip on their sheetrock. Now, it was behind a table that had to be moved for me to do wallpaper. They said, oh, you chipped my wall. I said, oh, please understand that I didn't chip the wall. I said, can I suggest to you that you only noticed it since the end table was moved out? No, 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 Spencer, you chipped the wall. So, I said, okay, please understand, I'm not going to fight you on this. I will fix the wall, but I will be working for you completely free, fixing damage that I didn't do. They, they said, fine, don't worry about it, don't come. They, they realized, you know, I didn't chip their wall. And I said, where is the chip? It was about four inches. Where is the chip? It's not on my drop cloth, <laughs> you know? You know, sometimes, but so anyway, this is what I do. If you guys paint, you guys are new at painting, there's always a liability involved, okay? You have to cover things, you know? And so here we go. I'm gonna vacuum, I'm gonna brush off the dust that I made after making the walls nice and smooth, or the, uh, the, uh, the doors, and then we'll begin. Okay, I'll just show you the prep. We got tape all in these areas. A lot of work to prep all of that. Okay, I'll be using a combination of a brush to get into my corners, a foam roller, and perhaps one of these woven contractor series rollers from Sherwin-Williams, okay? You can see the nap on it. It's nice and thin, not a long pile there, okay? So it's good to have a cleanup brush. on your truck so you can get into the corners. Or one of these. And you really wanna make sure you get that dust off because it'll wind up in your finish. Okay, so I suggest that you start here. You see how the sash, the angle sash brush gets in that corner, right? Just pull one way, pull it to the other side. Get in that corner. That's done. Just leave it. Now we got paint on this, right? Good, leave it, let it dry. The problem is when you start trying to do all the parts of the door at the same time, not a good idea. See how I'm holding the brush? Why am I holding the brush like this? Because I can push those filaments into those areas, this profile, in and out of here, this groove, because I need control of the brush. And this, the way I'm holding it, gives me the greatest ability to control it and push it in those crevices. After 
I code my inner profile, the piece of trim that's touching the glass. After I coat that, and I strongly suggest that you coat it twice. The next thing I do is go to the hinges. And I want to get right up against that tape. Why? Because now my door has the color on the door next to the hinge. And all I have to do is to paint this rail, not worrying about getting up against the hinge because I've already done it. And when I paint this rail, that will be dry. If you try to do it otherwise, here's what would happen. If you tried to paint up against the hinges and painting the rail in the same pass. Okay, so we do this one, then we do that one, we do these two, these start drying. They start setting up. And then you go to paint it and you realize that, hey, it's a little, the roller moves a little slow here. What's going on? You're pulling paint up that's drying. Consequently, you're going to see a differential in sheen when you look at the, the door at an angle. You're going to see it. Okay? So get this painted. I call it colored. So you under, really understand what you're really doing. You're coloring it. And then when this dries, then we paint the rail. After I get my inner trim painted, and my hinges painted, you know what I mean by that. I'm now gonna go down and give the bottom of the door and the entire bottom a painted edge. For the same reason. You know, you can't roll right up against the floor, right? So the brush gets in there, right? But then, as good as you might be with the brush when that dries, you're going to have a different applicator finish. One with the brush, one with the roller. So we want to get the bottom done with the applicator that will go as close to the floor as possible. As you can see, that's right up against the bottom of the door. And then when we do the roller, we bring it as close as we can to the bottom so that the door all has the same, what we call the application finish. Okay. Once I get that done, by the way, if you're confident to put a piece of raw wood on the door after the manufacture, you may want to prime this with a wood primer so that you seal the grain of the wood properly. After I get my hinges done and all of the, the uh, what I'm going to call the appendages, we want to now address the doorknob. Wherever you cannot do a continuous stroke with the final applicator, in this case a roller, wherever you can wherever you're interrupted in the movement of your hand, this is in the way, right? So when we're rolling, you want to use the brush to color around the doorknob so that the eye will not be able to see where you colored it in with the brush so that it looks like a non-stop flow of the application with the final applicator, which in this case, as you know, will be the roller. Now, I think you would agree. The area around that doorknob is ready to receive the color of the paint with the final applicator. It's all colored in. You don't have to worry about this. 
Okay, if you don't do it like this, your door is not going to look good. After we get all of that done with one coat, we come around now and do the whole thing again, real quick. Because now the pores on the wall, on the door are sealed. So the second coat should move real quick. And you just want to get any areas that you may have missed, any of those nooks and crannies where the paint may have seeped into the cranny or the nook. And you want to just get it in there, okay? Let's do that twice. While the other side of the door is drying with its first coat, I come in and I do this part of the door. Okay. Now, since the door is new, I'm painting this part. But this part of the door should be the color of the room from which you see this. It wouldn't be the color of this trim in here. It would be the color of the room that you're in when you see it. It all happens to be a white, but this is in fact a different color than this. I think, I think it's a little different. For my final coat, I'm doing this trim that has been primed. Now, I want you to see how I do it. I'm concentrating on this side from here up to here. It's very important that you understand how a brush can really mess up the appearance of the paint job. Let me explain. First of all, let's talk about the direction of the stroke. I'm going up and down, right? But hold on, don't shut the video off. Here's why. I'm finishing this way. That is the most important part of this segment of the video, but I just did. Do not finish haphazardly up, down, sideways. One direction. You'll thank me in the end. You see this annoying thing? Remember in the beginning of the video I said tedious? It's annoying. You know, but you want to be known as a professional, <laughs> you better cover everything <laughs> and then some. Okay, look what I'm doing. One, two, three. How many times am I hitting this? A lot of nooks and crannies here. One direction, one direction, one direction. Remember I said I wasn't doing that side? Do you know what would happen if I did this? Why? Let me just do it. Then this over here. You got sideways strokes going this way. One direction. One side of the trim at a time, folks. Come on. Okay, then we'll do that over here when this is dry. Okay. Now, do you see to the left of the trim how it's wet here? You want to let that dry because if I start painting up against it, let me, let, let's just do it the wrong way. Watch. This is starting to dry. It's sticky. Now, let me show you what it's going to look like. Let me show you. Okay. On the edge of this swath of paint, is paint that's drying. And I have to confess that you can't see it here, but please don't do it. Because, you see above the wetness, see that? It's over there, it's 75% it's dry right on the edge here. You start painting that after it's nearly dry, you're gonna get a different finish. 
In fact, you can see it. Take a look. You see? To the right of my brush, do you see that area right there? And the, you, see, you can see the markation, right? You don't want that. Okay. Okay. Do you see it right in the center of your screen? Eight ounces per gallon. We're going to use Floatrol. And if you YouTube my video on Spencer Colgan Avoid Eliminate Brush Strokes, you'll find that I used a similar product in order to get a beautiful shine on my woodwork trim crown molding that I was painting in that video. So I'm, I'm using Floatrol here. And I'm going to add a little less than eight ounces because I have a little less than a gallon of paint in my tray. Okay, so I mixed it into my can and I'm just going to add it to my paint and stir it. So in between the first and the last coat, I'm just going to make some keys on the paint Scratch the surface so that the next coat adheres nicely. Wipe it down first and then let's paint it. The surfaces have to be really dust free here. I'm going beyond the uh, the vertical rail on the left. I am a fanatic for perfection. Here's why. There's a line here. Or at least... There. Yeah, there's a line. If you look close, can see a line and so you want to make sure that your paint also is going in the direction of the natural lines on the doors okay so on my last coat I want to come up with my my, my paintbrush again real easy gingerly right there get that in there we're not putting a lot of paint. That's how you make pooling drip marks on your door. Look at that. It's already colored. Think of it as coloring. You're just coloring it. You don't want too much paint in this area. Okay. Now, while it's wet, let me say it again. While this is wet, you want to get that roller going. Let's do it. Look at that. Now, why when it's wet? Well, you want to make sure about the drying time, right? It's all got to be the same. That's how you get the best finish, okay? Pressure is important. Pressure. You can do it. I know it sounds all technical. There you go. Follow that line down there. Look at that. Now I'm going back and forth, right? It's a no-no on the final stroke. One direction, check it out. Watch my edge, watch my edge. I'm following that line straight down. That's it. There you go. And that's how I'm going to paint the rest of the door, just like that. See how I'm keeping my roller straight? You don't see any of this action. Right? And we're going to finish in the same. The whole door is going to finish downward on the verticals, horizontal, on the horizontals. Now, on this rail, this is already wet. So I'm meeting, I'm overlapping where I've finished off on the first stroke. 
And now I come down. Come straight down. See why you want all the all the door colored already, right? Boom back up. See how the roller can't get into the corner perfectly? Or the edge, I mean. We're gonna go up. Down. Down, down, down. Now. Start at the top. Get some of this paint off of this thing. Too much. You know, too much. Not for the for what we need, but too much to go this close to the top. You don't want too much paint on the roller applicator when you start up there. One direction, go down. Okay, let's go. I lift off like an airplane takes off. Okay. I remember where it took off. I'm gonna re-dip. I'm gonna re-dip and start down there. Now, let's do this right. Come on, go back up. Okay, go back up. Go back up. Now, down nice and gently. Drop down. Come up, meet the two, the union point. Because when you have a door that's more than eight feet high, to go all the way down and without stopping is going to make thicker paint at the top, thinner paint at the bottom. So we just finish it like that and with the Look at that gorgeous finish there. Look at that. Look at that. Don't thank me. That's your flow troll. Okay. Look closely at the top of this vertical rail. Now that's wet, obviously. But if you look close, if I leave this like this, you see that? That's a brush mark. Uh-uh. That's not our finish. Let's finish this off now. Make it gorgeous. So, yeah, we introduced the brush again because we have a line here. We want the line to be perfectly straight, okay? So we can only do that with the brush. Maybe you can do it with the roller. I can't. Okay, who's the teacher here, me or you? Just kidding. Are you one of those people? I hope not. Okay. Okay, now, you know that our roller is wet. Wow, look at that. Okay, come on now. Why am I whispering? Because I got you guys watching me. And you guys worry me. Pressure's gotta be universal. If you're pressing hard, which you shouldn't be, but you'd have to press hard all throughout. Same pressure, that's my point. Oh, great, we got a hand, we got a handle there. No problem. Now, let's go down to that doorknob. Okay, gorgeous. Are we ready to finish this rail? Yeah, let's do it. I'm starting at the very top here. Wow, look at that. One uninterrupted. That's the best you're gonna do. <laughs> now look at the markation there. See that? Yeah, isn't that gorgeous? Oh my goodness, I love it. Do you love it? Okay, now, get some color in there. This is like the third or fourth time we're doing this, but that's all right. Nice, just get the color in there. That's all we wanna do. Stop saying I sound like Bob Ross. I'm tired of it. Tired of it. I don't sound like Bob Ross. He sounds like me. Get out of there. We're on video, stupid. Okay. Now, let's go down to the bottom. 
you guys would think you know why I'm doing this right now. You know why. You know it. You got it. Don't tell everybody. Shh. Shh. Okay, gorgeous. Now. Don't crush your roller like I did. You'll make an uneven layout. Don't do what I did. Nice. There's no, it's not crushed. Before it was crushed, that's why I went over it repeatedly. Okay, very nice. I'm laying it out. Don't violate the line. Very nice. Now, my paint is being laid out, okay? Watch this. I'm going up here with a lot less paint on my roller. Look. You just want to pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Get ready for the last stroke, okay? One, two, three, let's go. Nice, look at that, look at that. Oh my goodness. That's it, folks. Look at that finish. Did I spray it on? This is brushed. Yuck. Yuckles. Can somebody just say, wow, just W-O-W. -W. When I'm removing my tape on my hinges or even on the doorknob, I like to leave myself a little handle to pull off the tape. It makes the job a lot easier. When you're pulling off the tape, you want to pull toward your body in case there has been any bridging of the paint attaching itself to the tape and then drying. You'll tear it, but the chances of tearing it are minimized by pulling it away, directly away from the object you were masking. Now here's a problem if you're using a foam roller. I'm gonna let you listen to it. Do you hear that? No, I'm just, I'm trying to explain to people how they not to use a foam roller. Okay, you can hear it there. You know when your tire goes over a bumpy thing on the road, right? So what happens to rollers is you're not keeping a, a uh, an equal amount of material in it. And then you say, what happened, Spencer? I did what you said. Let me show you the effect. You can't see it, but you can hear it. So. So here's what you want to do. You want to load up the roller with an amount sufficient so that the sound is the same throughout. Because if you can't see the differential while you're doing it, you'll see it when you're finished. Now just listen. You hear how there's no rattling or bumpiness? You know what that bumpiness is? It's going over the dry part of the roller. And so it makes a certain sound. And so if it's all the same sound, you can expect the same appearance. to put the finishing touches on your door before I show you the beautiful results. I love this stuff. It's about $3 a can, and not for the small one, for the bigger one. So, now, did you know that you could clean glass with steel wool. Who thinks this would scratch glass? It doesn't. This is my stainless steel forage. I just I want to get the I want to get the edge perfect. And if you look at it, I just want to push the paint which is curing right into the crevice. 
right into that corner, okay? And I do it by lubricating the steel with the window cleaner. I get a little on it. And then here's the next secret, which is not so much a secret anymore, but microfiber. Microfiber cloth doesn't leave streaks, okay? By the way, if, if you folks hang graphics, you wanna use a microfiber, definitely. Because that stuff will leave smudges, fingerprints, and everything else on it. I hung graphics in a pharmacy by Dreamscape. Let me tell you something. They have a shiny um, a shiny facade. The top layer is shiny. That's their finish. And if you leave any fingerprints or wipe marks on it, they'll show. So that's where I learned about microfiber. They're becoming more and more popular. They're amazing. So anyway, that's what I recommend you clean off your glass with. It's my favorite time of the job. I'm finished. Now, let's see. That's what you pros are looking for, right? Did you think I wasn't going to show you? No. Yes, that's a Doberman Pinscher right there. And she's temperamental too. You know, trying to stay out of her way. Gorgeous. Anyway, any questions? Or if you have a helpful hint as to how to do this better, please leave a comment. Thank you for watching.